So what we're going to do today is to have a look at, at a Landsat data set again and also some worldview data and looking at some of the different ways in which we process data to get some form of information output. What I'm going to start doing first of all is to open the data set that you've been given for today. Um, so this is the TM Darwin 171009. Uh, which is the same, which has been derived from the data set that you've been working with previously, but this time it's got a, um, a subscript of TOA reflect, standing for top of atmosphere reflectance. Now, the difference that you'll see, you f firstly probably won't notice anything in terms of the visual display of the image as you bring it up in a new display window. Um, however, if you were to look at individual pixel values, you'll notice that they're considerably different to the pixel values that you have seen on the Landsat image in the previous practical sessions. So if I was to uh, go to, say, cursor location value and wave my cursor anywhere over the image, um, the data values that you see within here, you now see can contain a decimal point value or floating point data. And previously, these values would have been anywhere between 0 and 255, as you may have noticed. Um, but this image has now been processed um, from what was originally the raw data that you were using uh, up to the top of atmosphere reflectance um, processing stage. So it has gone through some radiometric correction. It's, it's been through to at sensor radiance, and now this, this image here is the at sensor reflectance. Now, when we're talking about at sensor reflectance, that means that it is the light coming into the sensor, but also accounted, it also accounts for the amount of light at that time of day, at that location, when the image was acquired. So this, this helps to standardise for obtaining images at different times of the year. Now, the other thing that you'll note with, um, with floating point data with a decimal point. If you have a look at the file size of the image that we're using today, again, like although it looks almost identical to the image that you've used previously, you'll see the file size is considerably larger to the, the raw data that you used um, in the first practical. So the reason that we used the raw data in the initial practical was, was purely because of that file size issue and it just makes it a little bit easier to handle when, you, when you're looking at, at smaller file sizes to start with. The second uh, image data set we'll, we'll look at is the Worldview data set. And I'll just open that now. We've, we've looked at the, um, at the multispectral data set in, the, in a previous practical. Um, so we looked at that in, in our practical two. So we'll open that as well. So what I've just opened is, is the multiband data set that we looked at in Prac 2 plus the panchromatic data set um, that we'll also have a look at now as well. So if I open the panchromatic data set of Worldview You'll be able to zoom into various areas, um, say around the, the campus here, and see quite a bit of detail. And I can also look at the, the multiband worldview data set there as well. And you'll see, obviously, it covers the same area, it was acquired by the same sensor at the same time. Um, but the amount of spatial detail that you'll be able to see within the image is slightly different between the two different data sets. But what I want to look at first of all is is the the first stage of um, of well, one of the stages of pre-processing in terms of atmospheric correction, and we're going to uh, conduct a really simple atmospheric correction operation called dark pixel subtraction. But in order to understand exactly what's going on with dark pixel subtraction, it's a good idea to have a look at the statistics that you have within your image to start with. So we, we've had a look at one way that we can look at pixel values by looking at the cursor location value um, tool and waving your cursor over the image so you get an idea of what's, what are the pixel values. Um, but to have a better look at the statistics, we need to actually run some statistics there. 
So if you to go up to um, basic tools and statistics and compute statistics, and we're going to compute statistics on this um, this top of atmosphere reflectance image, and and hit OK on that one. The only box that I want you to take additional to this is the histograms box there, and otherwise we'll just keep everything as it is and go OK. Now that's that's just popped up. So what we've got here are the statistics results, um, and there's a, there's a few things that I want to um, for you to become familiar with when when looking at these stats. So the basic graph that comes up first of all, we've got a mix of red, green, and white lines. Now if you want to know what those lines are actually representing, if you simply right click in the display area and go plot key, uh, you'll get a, a small key that gives you information about what those what those lines are referring to. So you'll see that we've got minimum and maximum values, and this is across the entire data set, shown in the two red curves. The mean is the white, and then the plus and minus standard deviation in the green. Okay, so that's that's considering the wavelength along the x-axis, which is the the different Landsat bands one through five and seven, and the spectral value in terms of that sensor reflectance on the y-axis there. Now you can also see what these what the values of each of these bands are in the the statistics values down the down the bottom here in the grey area. So for example in band 1 it's saying that the minimum value is 0 0.0787 etc and the max is 0.34. You've got the mean and standard deviation values there also. So the idea that what we're going to use this information for to start with is I want you to ob observe what these minimum and maximum values are for the different bands and consider what this means in terms of the contribution of the atmosphere to to the spectral reflectance of your data. Now what we can also do is have a look at the histograms of individual bands as well. So first of all we, if we hit clear plot um, and then I can look at say the histogram of band 1 to start with. Alright so this is giving me the data value on the x-axis so this is a value in the in the top of atmosphere reflectance and on the y-axis is the number of pixels that have that particular data value for band 1. Now I can choose to plot all all, histi all bands, the histogram for all bands together, uh, which I'll just do now, though it does get a little bit confusing in terms of what you're actually looking at. But you'll see that there is a difference in distribution across, across the data values for the different bands, and you'd expect that as well as the different bands are displaying different things in the image. So again, if we go through, say, display band 1, um, and then band two together, you'll see they're somewhat similar, and there's quite a lot of overlap in the in the spectral distribution. Um, though if I put say band five up there as well, you'll see it's got quite a different distribution in spectral values. So there's there's a large number of low spectral values, and then there's there's another mode out here um, somewhere at around point two. Now again, you can look at the actual data values um, through through the statistics down the bottom there. Now, what I want you to do is once you once you've had a look at that and and had a bit of a feel for the the different statistics that are being presented, and you can understand exactly what they're showing, is to then go ahead and create the the dark pixel subtraction image which I've, I've already done in the meantime and I've just I've put this one up here so at the moment I've got the, the left image is the original top of atmosphere reflectance and the the right image is the one where I've created the dark pixel subtraction or is essentially this the same as at surface reflectance so this this is the amount of reflected light that is coming off the surface and we've taken into account to some extent the effects of the atmosphere through additive path radiance. Now what I've also done for the two images that I've that I've pulled up is um, I've created a geographic link so if you just remember if you right click on an image and go to geographic link and switch those on and go OK. So if you move anywhere throughout the image you're going to see that the same area displayed in both your images. 
Now, the thing you note here is that visually both images are going to look very similar to each other. However, if we're to look at the spectral profiles of an individual pixel, so we'll switch on have a look at which pixel we're going to investigate to start with, and this is just a pixel I've selected at random, and we can have a look at the, the um, profile of that particular one. So this first one I've just pulled up is the image where I've created the dark pixel subtraction, and the second one is the profile for that exact same pixel but at the top of atmosphere reflectance. So the idea is to have a look at the different profiles here and, and see how the, the change that you have implemented through the dark pixel subtraction is actually affecting your spectral signature in terms of the form and the magnitude. Now what you can also do is if you were to, to right click in the window of your, any of your spectral profiles and go to plot key, now I can also grab this the name of that profile in the key. If I click on it with my left mouse key, I can drag it over to the other profile window. And you'll see now those the two profiles overlaid exactly one on top of the other. And you'll see that there is quite a difference there. Now you just have to be a little bit careful here is that um, the name of each of those signatures is going to be just the, the, the pixel location essentially. Um, so to avoid confusion, if we'll just remove that one that we had added in before, if we actually go to edit and data parameters, we might just give this one a name here. So I'll say that's the dark pixel subtraction one and close that off. And now if we drag it over again, and go up to edit and data parameters here for our dark pixel subtraction. Um, I'm just going to click on the color patch and perhaps change that to red and apply that and close that off. So you can see quite clear, clearly the difference between the two profiles. So this is one really good way of comparing the data that you, that you see and the correction that you've made. And this is also something that you should be, become familiar with in terms of what you expect the correction to actually be providing for you and making sure that your output is the same as what you would expect it to be so you can quickly and easily pick up any errors that may have occurred. So I'll just close off those for the moment. And the next thing that we're going to have a look at is the, t the statistics. So here's the, t the statistics that I ran previously on the top of atmosphere reflectance image. I'm just going to clear the plot and go back to the min-max mean plot, so this is the original one that came up. And also in the meantime I created a statistics um, data set for the dark pixel subtraction image there. So what we've got here are our two our two different data sets, the top of atmosphere reflectance on the right and the dark pixel subtraction, sorry, top of atmosphere reflectance on the left and dark pixel subtraction on the right. And those individual profiles that are the, the same profile in um, both left and right viewer there. So in terms of the form of the profiles, what you're looking at within the, the min, max, um, mean and standard deviation values is you will see a slight slightly different form between your two images um, pre and post correction um, but the real uh, the real giveaway here is being able to look at your your basic basic statistics and the actual values of the minimum maximum mean and standard deviation we can see that the minimum value for the top of atmosphere reflectance in band 1 for example is 0 0.078 etc um, whereas post correction our minimum value is now set at zero and if you were to subtract that minimum value from that maximum you would actually get the new maximum that we see in our dark pixel subtraction image and you can see that across all bands what, you, what you'll see is that there's actually no difference in bands 5 and 6 and I want you to consider why that would be, why is it Why is it already zero in terms of a reflectance value in bands five and six, whereas there's a, there is a small reflectance value in the other bands there.